How can we launch any other Windows program from an IVR application? In this IVR Studio video, we will use our password protected message recorder to open broadcast by phone and broadcast the recorded message to a list of people. Even though we're launching Voices broadcast by phone, this method will work for launching any Windows program. In order to store the message for later replay, we will need to create a variable to hold the path of the WAV file that we record. Let's open the incoming call element to declare our variable. Click the Show Properties button. Select the Variables tab. Click the New button. This variable will hold the path of the message file. Call it Message File. All variables should be given an initial value. Initialize the variable to two single quotes. Click the OK button. We have created our variable and set the initial value. Now we need to use it to hold the message path. In the last lesson we made use of the VG last result system variable to get the path of the last user interaction, which was the recording of the WAV file. The element that should set this variable is a listen to message element. This is because the path is uncertain in the record message element, and by the time the message OK element is reached, the last result variable will be set to 1 for the last user interaction. Now we will create the action that sets the variable equal to the VG last result system variable. Open the listen to message element. Open the element properties through the context menu. Open the action tab to create a new variable action. Click the new button. Select the set variable value radio button. Click the OK button. Select the message file item from the combo box. Select the VG last result item from the combo box. Click the add variable button. Click OK. Now every time we record a message its path is recorded in a variable. If the user opts to re-record the message the path of the most recent recording is written over the prior path. Open the Message OK Elements property. Select the Action tab. Click the New button. Select the Run Program radio button. Click OK. Since new versions of Windows do not allow a service to launch a graphical program, we will take advantage of the Windows Task Scheduler to schedule the program start. We do this by scheduling a task in a batch file. Name the action Broadcast Batch File. We have created a Windows Batch File to run broadcast by phone. This .bat file will be explained in detail momentarily. In the Program field, we put the path for our batch file. All of the files for this project will be kept in a folder called Call Lists. The path is C, Call Lists, but you may put them wherever you like. Here we will add the command line arguments that will be passed to BBP through the batch file. Select the Valued Expression text box. The Start Now command tells BBP to start on execution. The Clean Status command tells BBP to delete anything in the status column and the Wave file command tells BBP to expect a wave file path and to use this wave file as the broadcast message. All command line arguments should be enclosed in single quotes. Click the OK button. Now we can add the variable that has the recorded wave file path. The syntax for including the message file variable can be tricky. It requires a variable be wrapped in a single quote, followed by a double quote, followed by a single quote, and then a plus sign. Click the OK button. Now we will add the path to the call list that we will be using for the broadcast. Now we add the path to the call list. A command line path must be wrapped in double quotes and all commands included must be wrapped in single quotes. The syntax is single quote, double quote, path, double quote, single quote. Click OK. This is what our finished argument window should look like. 
click the OK button. Now the message OK element is set to run the batch file. Let's look at the batch file and see how it works. The batch file is included in the project files for this lesson. I put mine in the C call lists directory. The echo on shows the script output in the command window. Since the introduction of Windows Vista and now 7, Microsoft has increased security restrictions that do not allow a program that is running by the system to interact with a user through a graphical interface. In order for the voice and gateway being run by the system to launch broadcast by phone, a graphical interface, the command must include the logged on user's name and password. Also to protect broadcast by phone from trying to call out before the inbound recording is complete, a timer is created that will start the broadcast at the beginning of the first minute after hanging up. Here we set the time. This block resets the clock if it is at 59 minutes. This block sets our variable to be the current time plus one minute. It then runs the SCH block. The SCH block declares and sets the variable ST time to the time of our broadcast. The command line variable holds the path of the broadcast by phone executable. Since Vista and Windows 7 will not allow a program running by the system account to launch a Windows GUI program, a username and password must be included to launch the program from the user's account. The computer name is available in the My Computer Properties, and the username and password are the same as when you log on to Windows. In this line, we schedule a BBP task by running ScheduleTasks.exe with a command line. Let's take a look at the command line. The first flag, slash create, tells schedule tasks to create a new task. The slash s is for the system name, which in our case should say voicent. The slash ru is where the user variable goes. The slash rp is for the password. The slash sc designates the number of times we should run. The slash tn is the program name that appears in the schedule tasks list. The slash tr designates the path of the program to be run. The slash st is the start time variable that we formulated. The slash it value enables a task to run interactively only if the slash ru user is currently logged on at the same time the task runs. This sums up the .bat file that is responsible for scheduling the broadcast with the desired parameters. Now let's see what a sample call list looks like. Here is a sample call list with names and made up numbers. When we call our phone number, input our password and record a message, BBP will call this list of people and deliver the message. Now let's review what we have. In the incoming call element properties, we add a variable that keeps track of the path of our recorded wave file. It is initialized with two single quotes. Now we set the variable to the most recently recorded wave file. Which we can get from the VG last result system variable. In the action tab of the message OK element, we assign the batch file to execute with all of the command line arguments that are required. This wraps up the IVR Studio lesson on deploying external applications. In the next lesson, we will create a custom broadcast by phone application that will read a BBP column and change the message based on the column.